Think about your life and the decisions that control your destiny. In the last five, 10, even 15 years, how many of you have made a decision that if you'd made a different decision, your life would be completely different? How many can think of one? For better or for worse, raise your hands. Look at that, that's everybody in the room. Well, I was faced with one of those major life decisions a couple of years ago. And I made a decision which was to sell the company I ran for 27 years. And today I want to share with you a story, not necessarily about my M&A process, but I want to share with you a story about how I got to the point of knowing that I wanted to sell my business and some of the learning moments I've had over the last almost two years. I had a major life epiphany on January 21st, 2017. It was a major decision, one that would change the trajectory of my life. Let's rewind to early 2013. At that time, I was actively running Digicom, a telecom company I started in 1991. And I decided at that time in 2013 that I wanted to double our business's revenues and triple profits in four years. And by the close of 2016, we had accomplished our goal ahead of schedule. We were able to double our profits and triple revenues in less than the planned four years. And that brings me to January 2017. It was now time for me to plan our next big audacious goal. And so I found myself going for a walk on the beach in Florida, a long walk. And after three hours, I had it all figured out. I had my business expansion plans figured out. I knew I wanted to double the business again. I knew who I was going to hire. I knew who I was going to promote. I understood the brand. I, I, I could vision the business and I knew where we were going. And then I had my Joanne moment. So who is Joanne? Not Joanne Dizzy, this is a different Joanne. Joanne is my wife Heather's best friend. And my wife found out in October of 2016 that her best friend had terminal brain cancer. And she was only 50. And by the time I had gone for my walk, excuse me, by the time I had gone for my walk, Joanne wasn't doing that well. And that's when it all came to me. I was three hours into my walk, and I knew I didn't want to run my business any longer. And at that moment, I came to realize after 27 years, I was done. I was mentally checked out at that point. So I'm sitting on the beach, and I'm like, this isn't working. So I walked to the JW Marriott, which was on the beach in, the, in Florida, pulled out my iPhone, and started typing away. And after 60 minutes, I had it all planned out. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I had the next 10 years of my life planned. So I knew there had to be more to life. And after 27 years of running the company, my heart just wasn't in it. So Joanne's terminal cancer diagnosis was my wake-up call. Went back to my house. I called Chris from Ernst & Young the very next morning. And they ultimately ended up becoming our M&A advisors. And I told him I was ready to sell the business. I was done. And from that day that I called Chris in early 2017, until the business closed in late 2017, and now over one year later, I've had the luxury of learning many things, both about M&A, but as of the last two months, I've learned something really important, more important than business, and that's something I want to share with you today. Now here's my promise to you. I'm going to share my story with you, I already have to some extent, and I'm also going to leave you with four key actionable takeaways that if you adopt into your life will help you reduce stress and will help you find mental clarity. CEOs and entrepreneurs are often more concerned about where their business stands, we are more concerned about how our business is doing, and we spend more time thinking about the health and status of our business than we do thinking about and taking care of ourselves. And I'm not talking about going to the gym. Yes, the gym is extremely important. But when I decided to sell my business, I was running away from something. I was running away from the stress of the job. I knew I didn't want to do what I was doing any longer, but I was addicted to the stress. So I spent months thinking about what I wanted to do. And then my business transaction closed. 
And yes, I was less stressed, but something was still missing from my life, and it would take me many more months to find it. But within the first few months after selling, I recognized that the silence of solitude can be deafening. My, my identity was wrapped up in my role. I was the president. I had a lineup of people waiting at my door to meet with me. I booked my calendar appointments in 15-minute increments. There's a feeling of significance that I got from being the president. And I stepped down as my company's president at the end of December 2017, so almost a year ago now. And by the third week in January of this year, 2018, I noticed that something was missing. The daily challenges, that feeling of significance, so I immediately jumped into something else. I wrote a book. I actually wrote two books. I published the first book. The next book I'm going to publish fairly shortly. The first book that I published is called The Kick-Ass Entrepreneur's Guide to Investing, Three Simple Steps to Create Wealth with Your Business's Profits. And the book did extremely well. I sold thousands of books, 40,000 books. It was the number one book on Amazon, uh, in both the nonfiction and the business section. It was number one for weeks. I think we saw, I think I collected probably over 8,000 email addresses inside of 10 weeks. So there's a picture of the book on the, on, as the number one book on Amazon. So I'm going to say there, I was now important again, except I wasn't, and I wasn't feeling significant. I was trying to replicate the feeling of significance of being the president, and it wasn't working. You see, I was chasing the wrong thing. I was chasing my old business life, and by the end of August, I was busy and I was stressed once again. My problem is, I hadn't figured out what I wanted. So four days before my family vacation this past August, I spent some time reflecting on what it is that I wanted. So what did I come up with? The power of the vision. So let me ask you, for all the CEOs in this room, who of you knows what your company vision statement is? Raise your hands. So not, not a very good showing. If you run a company, if you run a growing company, we put together a vision statement so that we understand who we are and where our business is going. Our business's vision statement serves to communicate purpose and direction to our shareholders, employees, vendors, and other stakeholders. If you're running a business, you should know what your business's vision statement is, and if you don't, you should have one. And by the show of hands or lack thereof, I'm thinking that maybe we need to spend some more time, and maybe I should have probably talked about personal vi business vision statements tonight. But nonetheless, here we are. So, and I'm not here today to tell you or to talk about business vision statements. But what I am saying is just like a business needs to understand its vision and where it's going, I came to recognize that I needed to do the same thing for myself. And I'm not talking about my five and ten year goals. It's deeper than that. I needed to define what I wanted from life. I needed to be introspective, to dig deep and to really understand what it is that I wanted. And I'm not talking about a goal of, of making a million dollars this year. That was always my goal, was about personal, personal financial success and, and, and attainment. I had to step back. I had to ask myself, if I were in Joanne's position, and I knew I had a terminal illness, and I was on my deathbed, would I be happy about where I was going? I asked myself the question, if today were the last day of my life, what I want to do, what I'm about to do today? And the answer was no. In his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey writes that people need to ask themselves a series of 10 questions, and they're important, and these are the questions that I asked myself which ended up helping me figure out what it is that I wanted to do. So I want to, I want to review them with you. So the first question, what is truly important in my life? What would I really like to be and do in my life? What are my greatest strengths? What are my talents, possibilities, and true potential? If I had unlimited time and resources, what would I do? What are my deepest priorities? Which relationships do I wish to be lasting? Who is the one person who has made the greatest positive impact in my life? What must I do and how must I manage my life to constantly nurture these vital relationships? And what kind of person do I wish to become? And what are the principles I would like to live by? So with these questions in mind, 
I jotted down the things that were most important to me. My time is my most precious commodity. I will spend my time wisely. I value my family and friend relationships. I will treat them with love and respect. I always keep my body strong and my mind engaged. My journey should allow me to experience new and exciting cultures and destinations. And I will seek to educate other entrepreneurs and help them on their path towards success. So I had, in effect, written a new set of priorities. Building another business wasn't one of them, and neither was making a lot of money. So now, with my new set of priorities more clearly defined, I crafted a personal vision statement that Stephen Covey says will help you control your decisions, determine your outlook, and provide for the direction for your future. So my new personal vision statement is now to have fun in my journey through life, to inspire other entrepreneurs to reach their full potential, to spend quality time with my family and friends, all while living a balanced life. My personal vision statement has positioned me on a new path for success. It gives me permission to say no to the things that are distractions. I went on vacation in August. I took myself off the business roller coaster, and I'm now working on rebalancing my life's priorities. Look, most of us in this room have taken the time to do this for our business. But how often do we really step back and ask ourselves if the roller coaster we call life, the destination we're in, that we're headed in, is really the destination we're intended to be on? I'm not suggesting you shouldn't have goals. You absolutely do. But you need to make sure that your personal goals are in alignment with your personal vision, much in the same way that your business's goals are in alignment with your business's vision. And once you have your personal vision set out, you're then in a position to work on your personal goals. Your vision helps define your goals, not the other way around. When I started this presentation, I asked you the question, think about your life and the decisions that have shaped your destiny. In the last 5, 10, 15 years, how many of you have made a decision that if you'd made a different decision, your life would be completely different? And now, as you know, I clearly did. We spend a lot of time at Pure Scale working on bringing you the best speakers to speak about marketing, sales, HR, SaaS, topics like cannabis on the workplace, and so on. We are all leaders in our companies. We provide the vision and direction to a large group of people, but we spend so much time working on perfecting our business, but we don't spend much time discussing what is probably the most important topic. Does the captain of the ship, that would be you, know where they're going? And maybe even the next and more important question, is the captain of the ship ready for the journey? There's a psychiatrist in California. His name is Michael Freeman. And he studies mental health among entrepreneurs. And what he found is that entrepreneurs are susceptible to episodes like depression and substance abuse. But Freeman also frequently sees genetic conditions like ADHD, and diagnosis on the bipolar spectrum in entrepreneurs. I'm going to say being the president is a really tough job. And in fact, in many days, I'd say being the president of a company, as much as I loved it, a lot of times is actually a shitty job. The things that I'm talking about are the elephant in the room. Mental health, depression, stress, and anxiety. We don't have to look very far to find recent episodes and stories like Kate Spade, and Anthony Bourdain, two recent high-profile entrepreneur suicides, to recognize that mental health is a major issue among people like us. And while there's no simple solution for managing mental health, things like getting enough sleep, eating healthy, and cultivating nurturing and supporting relationships can go a long way. We need to take care of ourselves. Actually, let me rephrase that. We need to take care of ourselves First, we need to take care of our mental health first. And we need to take care of our business second. I want you to stop and think about that for a minute. You are more important than your business. We entrepreneurs are going to change the world. But we need healthy relationships with ourselves and we need to place a higher priority on our own health and well-being before the well-being of our business. We sometimes have our priorities screwed up. 
I'm curious, by a show of hands, how many of you actually do believe that mental health is an issue among entrepreneurs? Good, there we go. A lot more people than believe, than know what their company vision statement is, so that's good. <laughs> so what can we do? I have a client who I started working with about four months ago, and we're working together on building his business, expanding sales, and so on, and he does something that I believe is genius. He spends 15 to 30 minutes a week sitting on a bench tucked away in a quiet path near his house. He gets into a mental zone where he focuses on his personal priorities and he spends time every week thinking through whether he's on the right track or not. His mental zone of clarity comes when he's on a park bench and that's where he finds peace. A lot of people find their peace by doing meditation. But here's my challenge to you. Find your bench, not literally and necessarily a bench, but figuratively. Find your place where you can spend some time alone, at least 15 minutes a week, thinking through your life's priorities. What do you want from life? What are your priorities? What is your vision? And are you living true to those priorities? Number two, create your personal vision. Do it now. Don't wait like I did until you have your Joanne moment. Number three, place you before your business. And number four, take care of your physical health. When I sold my business, I gained tons of knowledge about M&A, the process, what to do and what not to do. I've been working with a few entrepreneurs on helping them scale their business, like I mentioned. And I've definitely now got some new perspective on what ails some businesses more than others, or why some businesses succeed more than others. So I asked myself the question. I knew I was coming up here, and I initially prepared a presentation when we started preparing these tech talks. I was going to talk about Salesforce and CRM deployment in the organization. But I asked myself, What's the most valuable thing I've learned since my initial walk on the beach in early 2017? And of all the things that I've learned, of all the struggles, the M&A struggle that I had, and goodness, that was a really tough process, the M&A struggles, the, the, the process of building a business, of building a sales team, of marketing, of HR, of leadership, of all, inside of all those things are tons of valuable lessons. But my most valuable lesson that I've learned is a life lesson not a business lesson. Joanne passed away in March of 2017. Her passing gave me a new appreciation for life. Hopefully it doesn't have to take an unfortunate event for you to ask yourself the 10 Stephen Covey questions, or for you to ask yourself whether the journey you are on is the journey you are meant to be on, or put another way, is the captain of the ship, again, that's you, ready for the journey. I heard Steve Jobs speak this line at a Stanford University convocation speech. If you live each day as if it was your last, someday you will be right. So what is your vision? If you haven't created your vision and don't know the foundation of where you're going, I'm going to suggest you're never going to get there. Why? Because if you don't have a dream, you'll never have a dream come true. I shared today, I shared with you today my story, my struggle, so that maybe, just maybe, I can inspire you to do the same. So what does your tomorrow hold for you? Will you live your life with regrets and only after it's too late, stop and ask yourself, Stop and realize that you should have found your bench. Ask yourself every day, how am I living? Ask yourself those questions. Ask yourself the 10 Stephen Covey questions. Define your personal vision. Find your park bench. And it just might be for you, like it was for me, a life-defining moment. Thank you. Thank you.